Today, I've been given the run of the tech set to go through some common issues that you might encounter with disc brakes and how to fix them. Some of these problems can arise naturally over time through just wear and tear of stuff like brake pads and rotors, but there are a couple of things you can do to avoid problems presenting in the first place. First one, biggest thing with brakes is good hygiene around lubricants, oils, other contaminants that can work their way into the surface of your pads and uh, cause a lot of problems. The other thing is leaving your bike upside down for too long. If, like Blake, you find yourself momentarily upside down in the air, I wouldn't worry about that. It's more about leaving your bike hanging at an extreme angle upside down for too long. So why shouldn't you leave your mountain bike hanging upside down? Well, most modern brake systems are what's called open. So the system has the ability to self-adjust and balance the fluid level in your master cylinder within the brake lever, the hose, and the caliper by drawing or expelling fluid into a reservoir within the lever. And that has its volume adjusted by a rubber diaphragm pushed by the fluid level. For the diaphragm to move, it needs to be open to the air on the other side from the fluid so that it's not restricted and it can move freely with the, the fluid level rising and falling from what you need in the main system. Here we've got the, the main master cylinder that's driven by this piston, the ports here that are connected to the reservoir and the lever, and then this reservoir is up there, bounded by this rubber diaphragm, and that can sort of rise and fall with the fluid, but it needs to have this space of air to, to give it that freedom of movement. And this is connected to the outside world by this tiny little open port here. And that remains open all the time to allow that air to flow through. So if you invert your brake lever for a long time, how is, you know, how is that air getting in? What's actually happening? Well, you've got this, this chamber of air in the brake lever and it's, while well, it, it should be sealed off by the rubber diaphragm, but nothing's ever perfect and air molecules are quite small. So if you do have little imperfections, tiny little gaps, you can get those bubbles maybe traveling through. And in a normal angle of the brake lever, the, the reservoir is going to be on the top so air bubbles are staying up there. But if you invert the lever, you'll have the, the air actually underneath the master cylinder. And if there's a tiny little gap, these bubbles can work their way through into the fluid, then work their way through the tiny little port into the master cylinder. And, um, and that's when you get a spongy break. So with that out of the way, let's look at actually fixing some of the problems that you might encounter. One of the most common complaints with hydraulic disc brakes is they're feeling a bit vague and spongy rather than nice and sharp with a, a consistent bite point and like strong lever feel. And this obviously can be to do with needing a bleed, air in the system, but it can also be that your pistons have got a bit sticky or the calipers misalign with the rotor. So what do I mean by sticky pistons? Well, you do get dirt and water and other stuff building up around the circumference, the edges of that piston when it's extending out of the caliper. That then, it causes friction as it's moving, it can wear the pistons and work its way back into the hydraulic fluid and cause contamination and that vague feeling. So the way to get around this is to give it a clean. Uh, and one of the best things we like to do is use a cotton bud or a Q-tip and a really small amount of brake cleaning fluid and just working your way around the edges of those pistons and scraping the dirt off. So once you've got those pistons nice and clean, you can lubricate them as well, uh, the sides of the pistons that are the, the contact points with the caliper uh, using a little bit of the correct brake fluid for that system. So. Uh, Shimano uses mineral oil, some other brakes use mineral oil, a lot of other brakes use dot fluid 4, 5, 5.1, so it is important to check you want to be using the right stuff. Something that we like to do here is to use the, the small pointy end of a cable tie to apply that fluid, so like a little paintbrush, you can do it quite carefully, um, work that all the way around the piston and then before you put the pads back in and everything, make sure to wipe off any excess because unfortunately it will contaminate the pads. So once you've, uh, you've worked your fluid around the piston, they're all nicely lubed and moving in and out of the caliper smoothly. The next thing, uh, this is really important if you have maybe multiple pistons per side, you want them to be extending at the same level and sort of be balanced off. So you can, with a plastic tie lever or something else uh, soft, it's not gonna scratch the pistons because uh, these can be made of a ceramic material that scores quite easily. Uh, you can just, balance the pistons with this tie lever, like push them in so that they're extending at the same same rate. If you do do this cleaning lubrication of the pistons, it can make a real difference as of how clear and sharp the, the lever feel is in your brake. 
A spongy feel could also be a misaligned caliper. Uh, you want to have the pads contacting the rotor simultaneously to get that bite together. So if they're slightly off to the side, off balance, the pads start flexing the rotor before they bite against each other and that feel of the rotor bending is what gives you a spongy feel. So I start by aligning the caliper to the rotor without the pads in, um, just on the gap in the caliper that uh, the rotor passes through and without the pads it allows you to really see just by eye if everything's nice and square. Uh, so I have my caliper bolts backed off for an, just loose enough to allow you to move that caliper but not flapping about. Um, and then I just look a few different angles, probably squint, close one eye, check that that caliper is sitting nice and square. It gives you a good foundation to then have the pads balance and everything square later on. So once you're happy that the caliper itself is set up square and, and evenly, pop the pads back in and uh, just give the lever a bit of a pull and make sure that you, you can really feel when you get it right and the pads are contacting that rotor uh, exactly at the same time, square, and it gives you that really nice, punchy kind of feel to your brake. Once you've aligned that caliper uh, to the rotor without the pads in and you've refitted the pads, it can be that maybe they're not completely perfectly balanced and, uh, and contacting that rotor simultaneously. So the next thing would be to do what's called balancing the pads. Um, there are a few different tools you can use to do this, uh, depending on the sort of how much they need doing. What I tend to do sometimes is use just a, a small flathead screwdriver, make sure it's nice and clean, there's no oil on there or anything that you're gonna contaminate the pads. And um, the idea is to kind of hold one side or hold the pistons against the screwdriver and let the other side move and then you can sort of work that back and forth and make sure they're moving at the same time. So I would, with one hand on the brake lever and I've got my screwdriver in the other hand and I'm gonna like hold that pad out and squeeze the lever to make the other side come out and then see if it's contacting evenly, which it's not bad now. Um, I'll just give that a little eyeball. It's a little bit far, so I'll do it on the other side. I'm just helping the pistons out a little bit to get that nice and even. These haze brakes, uh, the pistons are made of metal, but a lot of manufacturers use a ceramic material for their pistons. Um, it's, it's quite brittle and easily scored, so if you are manipulating them with a tool, uh, just be careful you don't damage them. Um, and once you've done these steps, you've aligned the pistons, uh, you've aligned the calipers, you've lubed everything. If it's still feeling a bit vague and spongy, it could be time for a bleed. Um, if you're not sure about steps of that, then uh, you can check out Doddy's recent video, uh, How to Bleed Any Brake, and that takes you through all the steps for a quite a thorough examination of bleeding any type of brake. If your brakes are making a steady tinking noise, an intermittent noise without rubbing constantly, it's likely that the rotors are probably a little bit bent and out of alignment. Um, and this is something that you can fix with a there are specific tools such as this, it's a rotor truing fork. Um, I started, when I first learned to do this, I used an adjustable spanner, which does do the job, but you do get more fine adjustment of control and you're less likely to damage anything, damage the surface of your rotors or contaminate them um, if you use the proper tool. You might have noticed that uh, there's a bit of an issue with my bike now, the chain is hanging off. Um, and that, that's a little bit of a trick that I like to do when I'm truing my rotors. Uh, a lot of it, you really depend on your ears to hear the rubbing, because it's so fine you can't really see the rotor touching and you're depending on that noise. So what I've done here, uh, I've got the chain unhooked from the cassette and uh, the wheel can move completely independently of the drivetrain. Um, and that means I can really hear whether the pads are rubbing, which I couldn't really tell before. Um, so I give that a whirl and I can, I can hear the rotor touching, um, which is good because now I can fix a few. A couple of things about this. Um, firstly, if you do sort of overdo it, maybe you bend the rotor too much the other way, or something like that, you, you can revert what you've done, but you don't end up doing it too much and sort of fatiguing the metal or the steel rotor, um, that's gonna ultimately weaken it. Um, and also, it's, it's not 100% successful, this. I find you can normally have quite good results if the bend in the rotor is, is sort of a direct square kind of sideways displacement and you just tweak it back. If you begin to get a real wave in the rotor, like a Pringle wheel, it, it can be very hard to get it good again. Sometimes, ultimately, you're just chasing a tail and it's time for a new rotor. Uh, so step one uh, in truing the rotors is I rotate the wheel slowly so that I can read or identify like logos on the hub, but I can still hear the rubbing of the pads. 
Um, and then the second step is I like I match up where that rubbing is with a point on the hub relative to a logo or brand name or just something that helps me to identify it. So I like I like to do this because um, there's, I tend to lose my place on the rotor sometimes. Whereas if I know it's like relative to a certain point on the hub, like I can always find that again. So once once I find this point on the rotor, which is about here, and I can see where it is relative to a, a logo on the hub. Spin that round, putting the fork in the right place, and then just flexing it a bit, like not bending too much, but just past the sort of elastic limit of the steel rotor to get it to actually bend. And there we go, no noise. So you really, I'm not gonna touch that again now because it's not rubbing and I just really want a light touch. In contrast to an intermittent rubbing, sometimes I find my brakes are basically on all the time and I can't get them to stop rubbing. That can be a result of the pistons not being reset after replacing pads. The brake pistons are housed within rubber seals which are designed to flex as the pistons contract and reach the rotor and when the fluid pressure is released, they return to a neutral position and pull the pistons back away from the rotor. This is known as rollback. I always sort of thought that negative pressure of the hydraulic system did this, but it's actually compounded and helped by the elastic movement of the seals. When pads wear, the dead bands can increase to more than the maximum kind of flexing movement of the seals. And so in order for the pads to make contact with the rotor, the pistons actually slip out through their seals. This is how hydraulic brakes can self-adjust to wearing pads and rotors. Therefore, when you are fitting new pads, it's really important to reset the pistons fully back into the caliper. I do this with a plastic tie lever, so I'm not going to damage anything, and then reset them out to fit the new pad depth, match that dead band, and get them linking up nicely. If you're still having problems with your brakes rubbing and you've reset the pistons back and everything, it could be worth looking at your free stroke adjustment, returning this to a max stroke position on the lever. That gives you the biggest possible movement between the initial movement of the pistons and then when they contact the levers. Uh, it's normally like a small grub screw or bolt on the lever, so making sure this is in the max stroke possible, then resetting the, pas the pistons again, and, uh, and then that gives you the best chance of not having your brakes rubbing. If your brakes are bled, they're aligned, everything's set up, and you're still not getting maybe a, a nice sharp bite and consistent performance, or your brakes are noisy, it could be that, well, maybe your pads just need bedding in, which is all right, and maybe they've become contaminated, which is a little bit more of a headache. But we are gonna look at what you can do to try and fix that. So what is bedding in? Well, mostly braking performance comes from what's called adherent friction. So pad material from the body of the pad gets deposited on the rotor surface and then when the pads make contact with the rotor, the material on the pad and the material on the rotor form molecular bonds and then because the wheel's still turning, these bonds get broken, which take a force, and that's what slows you down. So in order to facilitate that, you have to put some pad material on the rotor itself. There is also abrasive friction, so this is caused by breakdown of the pad material and the rotor itself is a component of braking. It's not as consistent as the adherent friction, which is what we achieve by bedding in our pads. In order to facilitate this friction then, the adherent friction, if you are changing pads from organic to semi-metallic or sintered, it's definitely a good idea to clean your rotors off with some disc brake cleaner and emery paper. Some people like to change your rotors completely, get some fresh ones in that are fully suited to that pad type, or you can try and clean them. In order to bed your pads in, typically what I do is go to a long, shallow descent and, uh, and roll down there, repeatedly applying my brakes quite firmly and then releasing them just before you get to a stop. But getting those brakes heated up and uh, a bit of pad material depositing on the rotor and, uh, and just beginning that process. If you're getting a lot of noise, bad performance on your pads, they've definitely been bedded in, but they're still maybe squealy and not breaking properly with a poor bite, it's possible, unfortunately, they've been contaminated along with the rotors. So oil-based products can soak into that pad material and that prevents the adherent friction we were talking about. It blocks the molecules from um, bonding with each other and then it means your brakes don't really work. Rotors being made out of steel, they don't tend to absorb oil-based products in the same way that a pad would. So you can have a lot more success cleaning rotors, maybe using an alcohol-based solvent, normal detergent or degreaser or boiling water even, and then you can sometimes get that oil off and save your rotor. 
the thing with contamination is it, it feels like it can almost happen everywhere. You have to be really careful. One of the main things is avoiding touching your rotors too much because your skin does have natural oils on it and also obviously you could have cleaning products or other stuff you're not aware of on your fingers. So for example, now I'm holding it with a clean bit of cloth and when I'm cleaning my bike, I'm pretty careful to keep stuff away from the rotors, dripping lubes on them, stuff like that. It's just a constant little trickle in your mind about keeping them clean and safe. You can also follow these steps of cleaning the brake pads, so using the same kind of alcohol-based cleaners, degreasers and boiling water, and then clean, stiff plastic brushes to try and work that oil-based material out of the pads. However, cleaning the pads, the results can be a little bit unreliable. Something that you do tend to hear recommended quite a lot in this situation is um, burning the oil-based contaminants out of a pad material because because they're oil-based, they're flammable. The problem with that is that the resin that's used to bind organic pad material together is also flammable. So if you've got organic pads, please don't set fire to them. The problem with this as well is I have tried it quite a few times and I've never personally achieved much success with setting fire to my brakes. So there we go. I hope I've provided a bit of insight into a some of the common problems we find when setting up and using disc brakes. Uh, I've really enjoyed researching, just making sure I'm up to date on all the correct terms for this and, uh, and just solidify my knowledge a little bit. Let me know in the comments below if you've got specific stuff you use for your disc brakes. I'll be checking them out and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon.